Trump was talking about a ban from China back in January, right? Yeah. Um, he instituted the ban, I think, uh, 30 or 1st of January. That's when the ban actually happened. But at the time, the WHO yeah. was saying that they shouldn't do it, that you shouldn't restrict travel to China. And shortly after that, also, the Chinese foreign ministry said that um, they, he, they reacted very badly to Trump's ban, saying that it was, it was racist and xenophobic. So you mentioned the WHO, the World Health Organization, and the CDC, the Center for Disease Control. It seems like in the last month, the messaging out of the WHO specifically has been just absolutely all over the place. And, you know, there's some people that say, oh, well, they didn't want to push people into masks sort of for the reasons you're saying, because then regular people who maybe don't need them are going to get all the masks. The people who need them uh, won't have access to them. But have they as an organization really just kind of flubbed this thing from the beginning? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the w, there's no question that the WHO has, you know, basically abandoned its duties um, in so many ways. I mean, you can go all the way back to December. Um, you, if you go back to December 30th, that's when um, China first reported to the WHO, you know, that there were these cases, uh, you know, a cluster in Wuhan, about 41 people. That was the first time it was reported. Um, a day later, on the 31st of January, New Year's Eve, Juan basically said to the WHO, hey, we have heard that this is really serious and that there's human to human transmission. This was on the 31st of December. And the reason Taiwan knew about this was because there were Taiwanese doctors who had heard from their mainland colleagues that the medical staff in Wuhan were getting sick. So that's how you know human to human transmissions occurring. It's when, you know, it's not animal to person, but person to person, it, the patients are transferring it to, to the doctors. So Taiwan reports this and it takes weeks before you know, I think on the 14th of January, you still had that famous tweet by, by the WHO saying there's still no evidence of human to human transmission. Two weeks after Taiwan mm -hmm. told them that there was. And, and this has um, been the story of how they've handled this. They've cowed out yeah. to China. Wait, let's, actually, let's, just, um, let's just pause there for one sec, though. Let's just pause there for one sec. What is that? Like, what do you think structurally, as someone that knows about organizations like this, like, what happened in those two weeks? Did, were they intentionally misleading us? Did they just completely drop the ball? Was there political pressure? Was it, oh, they didn't want to be too alarmist? I mean, is it some combination of all of those things? Um, no, actually, the problem is that tai Taiwan doesn't have membership to the WHO. So China has very successfully muscled Taiwan out. So Taiwan's not recognized as, as a, a member. And, and, you know, for Taiwan, that's very dangerous because, you know, if you don't have that connection to the WHO, you are not plugged into this global health alert system. And the global health alert system is not plugged into Taiwan. So whatever intel Taiwan had was completely missed. Um, and then the worst part for Taiwan is that because China basically muscled them out. When all the other countries were placing travel bans, um, they were trying to ban you know, China, uh, people from China traveling to their countries. They inadvertently banned Taiwan because Taiwan was seen as part of China, which is what China wants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the WHO drops the ball, and then we've subsequently yeah. seen some other strange tweets, and we've seen some some strange statements by, by some of their representatives. Um, Trump was talking about a ban from China back in January, right? Yeah. Um, he instituted the ban, I think, uh, 30th or 1st of January. That's when the ban actually happened. But at the time, the WHO yeah. was saying that they shouldn't do it, that you shouldn't restrict travel to China. And shortly after that, also, the Chinese foreign ministry said that um, they, he, they reacted very badly to Trump's ban, saying that it was, it was racist and xenophobic um, to institute the ban. Yeah, surprise, surprise. So what, what do you make of the fact that now, because hindsight is twenty twenty, people are saying, oh, Trump didn't do anything 
in February, everyone knew that this was going to happen. Trump didn't do anything. I checked yesterday, and it turns out that, you know, there was a Democratic debate on February, I think it's 7th, 19th, and 25th. None of those debates mentioned anything about coronavirus, oddly, yet the media is now telling us that everybody was talking about all of this stuff in February. Um, oh, they were not. Yeah. Could, could he have done more? Should he have done more? How do you balance keeping people sane and keeping the economy open versus a potential looming threat, all of that? I mean, he, he did suggest that he was somewhat distracted by the impeachment proceedings. And for the whole month of February, you did have our journalist class doing one of two things, saying that this was just, you know, kind of the flu, just not just another flu or warning people about, you know, that that the stigma against Asian Americans were, was worse than the virus itself. And so even on the 9th of February, you had the health officials in New York City saying, come out for a Lunar New Year parade everything's okay, life is normal, you know, stand up to xenophobia and racism. So they were still acting as if, um, understandably, a lot of people miss this. Um, you know, it's okay, let's all just party and mix and, and you know, stand in defiance to, to, this, uh, to this virus. So a lot of people missed it, but I read yesterday that on the 29th of January that Pino Navarro, who was the trade official in, in Trump's cabinet, um, actually wrote a memo warning and saying that this virus is the real deal. And there's going to be, you know, at, at worst, 2 million deaths, at best, 100,000, but we got to act on it. And uh, he proposed actually a travel ban. Trump said he didn't read the memo, but shortly after, on the 31st, he actually, he actually did put down the travel ban. Um, that's one of the, you know, the good things about Trump is that he didn't really care about that. And this, this virus actually really fit in well with his ideological priors, you know, for being conservative on immigration um, mm -hmm. and being a bit more nationalistic in terms of, of trade and engagement. America first. Yeah. Can, can you talk a little bit about just like the inner machinations of China? Because right now it's like just in the last few days, we've seen this thing where, you know, U.S. cases are spiking, but China is reporting no new cases, no new deaths. And it's like, all right, well, just be, and then NBC News will literally make that statement. The AP will make that statement. And it's like, well, I guess that's sort of reporting and that you're reporting what China's reporting, but that's not really independent reporting. Like, can you just talk a little bit about how, how information can or can't travel in China? You know, the media's job is to be skeptical. And towards that end, they are very skeptical when it comes to reporting about the Trump administration. But they're not affording that same approach to the Chinese government when of all people who you should be skeptical about it should be numbers that are coming out of a very closed authoritarian society. Um, and, you know, I don't think, I think China has had a history of covering up numbers in general. People are very skeptical about even numbers coming out from their GDP calculations, um, how they miraculously always meet the exactly 6% growth target, like exact. Um, so they have a history of hiding things. And the fact that they had no qualms suppressing the whistleblower, censoring their their social media, um, why you know why would they, we not assume that they're they're covering up their their numbers? So if we can't trust the numbers that we're getting out of China, and sadly we can't really trust our own media to report on it properly, rather than just regurgitate the numbers. How do we get some sensible information out of China? Is there a way to do it that you can truly Actually, trust? Well, you know, the CIA apparently, they, they submitted a classified report to the White House. So Bloomberg reported on it. Um, and they actually basically said that they've been trying to verify China's numbers and they were unable to. So, you know, apart from intelligence agencies, or using some sort of proxy. Um, I think a lot of people saw these videos that were circulated in social media, um, all the urns that were you know, going to funeral homes and it didn't seem to match up with, with uh, rep what was reported. Um, 
the problem is that a lot of these videos, once they get posted by citizen journalists on the ground in Wuhan, ended up, you know, they end up getting taken down so fast. So information out of China is just unreliable. And I mean, unfortunately, the only thing that we have to we have to work with is the numbers you're submitting to the WHO. Hey everyone, we're obviously in some uncharted territory with coronavirus and our plan here is to help you make as much sense of the situation in a non-alarmist fashion as possible. If you're looking for reliable information from experts on the front lines of the pandemic, check out our coronavirus playlist, which we'll keep adding updates to right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe.